you. The two of us were so much alike. They were. They still are. Though years have rolled over their heads. But this afternoon, my obligation ceases. Individually, I love you all with affection unspeakable. Hooray! But collectively, well, I look upon you with a disgust that amounts to absolute detestation. Ah! Oh, pity me, beloved friends, for such is my sense of duty that once out of my indentures, I shall feel myself bound, heart and soul, to your extermination. Oh, <laughs> Frederick, if you conscientiously feel that it is your duty to destroy us, well, we cannot blame you for acting upon that conviction. Always act in accordance with the dictates of your conscience, my boy, and chance the consequences. Besides, we can offer you but little temptation to remain with us. We don't seem to make fire easy. Well, I'm sure that what? But we don't. I know why. But alas, I mustn't tell you. It would not be right. Why not, my boy? It is only 11.56, and you're one of us until the clock strikes 12. Rule and until then, you are bound to protect our interests. Well, then, tis my duty as a pirate to tell you that you're too tender-hearted. For instance, you make it a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourselves. When you attack a stronger one, you invariably get thrashed. There is some truth in that. Wow. Well. Then again, you make it a point of never molesting an orphan. Of course. We orphans ourselves know what it is. Yes, but it is got about. And what is the case? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. The last three ships we took proved to be manned entirely by orphans. And so we let them go. One would think that Great Britain's mercantile fleet was solely recruited from our orphan asylums. And we know this is not the case. Frederick. You wouldn't have us absolutely merciless. Oh, but there's my problem. Until 12 o'clock I would. After 12 I wouldn't. Oh, was ever a man placed in so delicate a situation? Frederick, your Ruth, whom you love so well, who has won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart, what's to become of her? Oh, he will take you with him. <laughs> well, Ruth, I feel some little difficulty about you. It is true that I admire you very much, but I have been constantly at sea since I was eight years old, and yours is the only woman's face I have seen in that time. I think it is a sweet face. No, oh, it is, it is. I say, I think it is. That is my impression. But as I have never had the opportunity of comparing you with other women, it is possible that I may be mistaken. True. <laughs> Oh, what a terrible thing it would be if I were to marry this innocent person and then to find out that she is, on the whole, plain. <laughs> oh, Ruth. Ruth is very... well. Well? Yes, very well indeed. Yes. <laughs> there are the remains of a fine woman about Ruth. Do you really think so? I do. Oh, well then. I should not be so selfish as to take her from you. In justice to her, and in consideration to you, sir, I will leave her behind. Oh! <laughs> Ooh. Ah. No, 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 it mustn't be, Frederick. We're rough men, rough, who lead a rough life. Yes, rough! But we are not so utterly heartless as to deprive thee of thy love. I think I am right in saying that there is not one here who would rob thee of this inestimable treasure or the world holds dear. Not one! I thought there wasn't. No, Frederick, keep thy love. Keep thy love. You're very good, I'm sure, but... Well, it is top of the tide and we must be off. Farewell, Frederick, and when your process of extermination begins, please try to make our deaths as swift and painless. Ooh. As you can conveniently make them. I will. By the love I have for the eyes, swear it. Would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization. No, Frederick. It mustn't be. 
I don't think much of our profession. <laughs> but in contrast with respectability, it is comparatively honest. No, Frederick, I shall live and die a pirate king. to live and die under the gray black flag I fly. Then play a sanctimonious part with a pirate head and a pirate heart. Away to the cheating world go you. Where pirates all are well to do. But I'll be true to the song I sing. And live and die a pirate king for I am the pirate king. It is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. I am a pirate king. A few more sheep, it's true, than a well-bred monarch got to do. But many a king on a first-class throne, if he wants to call his crown his home, must manage somehow to get through. Oh, older than I, and, well, 
A lad of 21 usually looks for a wife of 17. A wife of 17, he'll find me a wife of 1,000. No, I shall find you a wife of 47. And that is quite enough. Ruth, tell me candidly and without reserve, compared with other women, how are you? Well, I'll answer you truthfully, Master. I do have a slight cold, but otherwise, I'm quite well. I am sorry about your cold, but I was referring rather to your personal appearance. Ruth, compared with other women, are you, well, you know, beautiful? Oh, I can tell so, dear master. Ah, oh, but lately? Oh, no, years and years ago. Ruth, what do you think of yourself? It's a delicate question to answer. But I think I'm a fine woman. And that is your candid opinion? Yes, I would be deceiving you if I told you otherwise. Thank you, Ruth. I believe you. For I know you would not practice upon my inexperience. I wish to do the right thing. And if, I say if, you are truly a fine woman, then your age shall be no obstacle to our union. Hark! Surely I hear voices. Who would dare to venture upon our all but inaccessible lair? Can it be the Coast Guard? No, it does not sound like the Coast Guard.
what shall I do? Before these gentle maidens, I dare not show in this alarming costume. No, no, I must remain in close concealment until I can appear in decent clothing. <laughs> Thank you. 
Besides all the kinds of evil gabulous, it calls me psychopathic peculiarities parabolous. I can tell undoubted Raphael's from Jared Dawson's Offenies. I know the croaky chorus from the frogs of Aristophanes. Then I can hum a fugue of which I've heard the music's dinner for. Dinner for. I've got it! And whistle all the airs and that infernal nonsense. Dinner for. Whistle all the airs and that infernal nonsense. Whistle all the airs and that infernal nonsense. Whistle all the airs and that infernal nonsense. Babylonic uniform and tell you every detail of Galacticus's uniform. In short, in matters vegetable, animal and mineral, I am the very model of a modern major general. In short, in matters vegetable, animal and mineral, he is the very model of a modern major general. In fact, when I know what is meant by Mamelon and Rabelin, when I can tell at sight a Mauser rifle from a javelin, when such affairs as sorties and surprises I'm more wary at And when I know precisely what is meant by commissariat When I have learned what progress has been made in modern gunnery When I know more of tactics than a novice in a nunnery In short, when I have a smattering of elemental strategy Dear me! <laughs> Strategy, strategy, strategy. That's a hard one, isn't it? I've got it! You'll say it that a major general is never strategy. Say it that a major general is never strategy. Say it that a major general is never strategy. For my military knowledge, though I'm plucky and adventurous, has only been brought down through the beginning of the century. But still, in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very model of a modern major general. That was very good. But could you do it again? Certainly. And could you do it really fast? Watch this. Presto agitato, si vous play, maestro. <laughs> In fact, when I know what to spend my mammal on and ravelin, when I can tell a tight mouse rifle from a javelin, when such a pleasant sorties and surprises, I'm aware yet, and when I know precisely what is meant by common said yet. When I have learned what progress has been made in modern gunnery, when I know more of tactics and a novice in a nunnery, in short, when I have a smattering of elemental strategy, you'll say a better major general has never rode a horse! <laughs> Knowledge, so I'm lucky and adventure. It's only been brought down to the beginning of the century. But still, it matters vegetable, animal, and mineral. I am the very model of a modern military. Leave me to go through the remainder of my life 
unfriended, unprotected, and alone? <laughs> well, yes, that's the idea. <laughs> Tell me, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Oh, dash it all! Orphan. Yes, it's orphan. Have you ever known what it is to be one? I say, orphan. Orphan, orphan, orphan. Wait a bit. I don't think we quite understand one another. When I ask you if you've ever known what it is to be an orphan, you say orphan. Now, as I understand it, you are merely repeating the word orphan to show that you understand me. I didn't repeat the word orphan. Pardon me, but you did. I only repeated it once. Yes, but you repeated it. But not often. Stop! I think I know where we are getting confused. When you say orphan, do you mean orphan a person who has lost his parents, or orphan frequently? <laughs> ah! I beg your pardon. Frequently. Ah, you said orphan frequently. No, only once. Precisely, you said orphan frequently only once. See that man! Oh, men of dark and dismal fate, forgo your cruel employer. Have pity on my lonely state.
say something that will ease my father's sorrow. Huh? Can you cheer him up? Oh, I will try, dear Mabel. But tell me, why does he sit here night after night in this drafty old ruin? Why do I sit here night after night? Why do I sit here? Oh, Frederick, to escape the pirate's clutches, I described myself as an orphan. Heaven help me, I am no orphan. <laughs> I come here to humble myself before the tombs of my ancestors and to implore their forgiveness for having brought dishonor upon the family of Scotchin. <laughs> but you forget, sir. You only bought the property a year ago, and the stucco on your baronial castle is scarcely dry. Frederick, in this chapel are ancestors. You cannot deny that. With the estate, I bought the chapel and its contents. I don't know whose ancestors they were, but I know whose ancestors they are. And I shudder to think that their descendant by purchase, if I may so describe myself, should have brought dishonor upon what I had no doubt was an unstained escutcheon. <laughs> Be comforted, sir. For if you had not acted as you did, those reckless men would assuredly have called in the nearest clergyman and married your large family on the spot. I thank you for your proffered solace, but it is unavailing. I assure you, Frederick, that such is the anguish and remorse that I feel at the abominable falsehood by which I escaped these easily deluded pirates, that I would go to their simple-minded chiefs this very night and confess all. Did I not fear that the consequences would be most disastrous to myself? <laughs> at what time does your expedition march against these scoundrels? At 11. And before midnight, I hope to have atoned for my involuntary association with the pestilent scourges by sweeping them from the face of the earth. And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. Are your devoted followers at hand? They are. The only way to my orders. Then, Frederick, let your escort lion hearted be to receive a general's blessing. Depart upon their dreaded bench yard. Dear sir, they come. <laughs> We 
serve too great a stress on the wrist that on us press, and a reference a lack to our chance of coming back. Still, perhaps it would be wise not to carp or criticize, for it's very evident these attentions are well meant. Yes, perhaps it would be wise not to carp or criticize, for it's very evident these attentions are well meant. Don't 
Taste for curious quips are kites and contradictions queer. And with the laughter on our lips, we wished you there to hear. We said if we could tell it him, how Frederick was the joke and joy. And so we risked both life and limb to tell it to our boy. That paradox. That paradox. That most ingenious paradox. We quips and quibbles, turn and flux, but none to beat this paradox. A paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. A paradox. <laughs> To which, however, I have no desire to be disloyal. Some person in authority. I don't know who. Very likely the astronomer royal has decided that although for such a beastly month as February, 28 days as a rule are plenty. One year in every four. His days shall be reckoned as nine and twenty. Through some singular coincidence, I shouldn't be surprised, though owing to the agency of an ill-natured fairy. You are the victim of this clumsy arrangement, having been born in leap year on the 29th of February. And so, by a simple arithmetical process, you will easily discover that though you live 21 years, yet if we go by birthdays, you're only five and a little bit over. <laughs> yes, yes, with yours my figures do agree. <laughs> The ways of paradox and common sense he gaily mocks. No counting in the usual way, yes, 21 I've been alive. Yet reckoning by my natal day. Yet reckoning by my natal day. I am a little boy of five. He is a little boy of five. <laughs> a paradox, a paradox, a messenger's paradox. <laughs> situation. You were apprenticed to us. Yes, until I reached my 21st year. Oh, no, 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 no. Until you reach your 21st, the other rather have been. Oh, birthday. <laughs> and if we go by birthdays, you're only five and a quarter. <laughs> you don't mean to say that you're going to hold me to this. Oh, no, 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 no. We merely remind you of the fact and leave the rest your sense of duty. Your sense of duty? Oh, don't put it on that footing. Because I was merciful to you just now. Be merciful to me. I implore you, do not insist upon the letter of your bond, just as the cup of happiness is at my lips. Oh, but we insist on nothing. We merely content ourselves with pointing out to you your duty. Your duty. Well, you have appealed to my sense of duty. My duty is only too clear. Oh, I abhor your infamous calling. I shall write the thought that I was ever mixed up with it. But duty is before all. And at any price, I will do my duty. Bravely spoken. Come, you're one of us once more. Lead on, I follow. <laughs> Open to 
my own situation, I will do this. Well, let me thank her adoration. I will tell her I am love and pity and my moral senses, and I don't know what to do about the king because of course, and I don't want to perish by the sword, about a dagger, about a pine, must indulge a little part of a sword. The water to a goblin, my vanity was butter, and I have to go tonight, so it really doesn't matter. 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 Why we sing this 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 doesn't matter. Why he enters one of your band. Speak out. I charge you by the sense of conscience as to which you have never yet appealed in vain. <laughs> well, General Stanley. Yes. The father of my Mabel. Yes, yes. Well, General Stanley escaped from you on the plea that he was an orphan. He did! Oh, yes. He did. I was there. Well. Oh, it breaks my heart to betray the honored father of the girl I adore. Break it. You're just one of your band. I have no alternative. None. Well then, it is my duty as a pirate to tell you that General Stanley... General, General Stanley, Stanley what? what? General Stanley is no... What, what, what? General Stanley is no... Oh. Orphan! When you say orphan, <laughs> do you mean orphan, a person who's lost his parents, or orphan frequently? Orphan, a person who's lost his parents. What? And more than that, no! contemptible life, he dare to practice upon our credulous simplicity? <laughs> our revenge shall be swift and terrible. We will collect our band and attack Tremorden Castle this very night. We must stay. Not a word. He's doomed. Away, away. Me to the car away, away. Wolves and barley tricks that have our pride. Vengeance, how the pride is for decide. Age is stern, he softened with his lies. And in return, tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, yes tonight, tonight the traitor, the traitor dies. dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Tonight he dies. Yes, to tomorrow. Yeah. Girls like mine. Two women in sorrow. Who wants a spot? In an age they share.
been made. Mabel, my dearly loved one, I bound myself to serve a pirate captain until I reached my one and twentieth birthday. I've just discovered that I was born in leap year, and that birthday will not be reached by me till 1940. A horrible catastrophe appalling. And so
1940 I of age shall be. I'll then return and claim you, I declare it. It's so long. Swear till then that you'll be true to me. Behind. Yet when the 
dangers near. We manage to appear as insensible to fear as anybody here, as anybody here. Tarantara, 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 Distressing to us to be the agents whereby our erring fellow creatures are deprived of that liberty which is so dear to us all. But we should have thought of that before we joined the force. We should. Well, it's too late now. Felon's not engaged in his employment. His employment. Or maturing his felonious little plans. Little plans. His capacity for innocent enjoyment. enjoyment is just as great as any honest man's. Honest man's. Our feelings we with difficulty smother. smother. When constabulary duties to be done. Ah, take one consideration with another. Our policeman's lot is not a happy one. Oh, constabulary duties to be done, to be done. Our policeman's lot is not a Enterprising burglars not a burgling. Not a burgling. When the cutthroat isn't occupied in crime. crime. He loves to hear the little brook a gurgling. And listen to the merry village chime. When the coster's finished jumping on his mother. He loves to lie basking in the sun. Ah, take one consideration with another. Ah, policeman's lot is not a happy one. Oh, very oh. duties to be done, to be done. Ah, policeman's lot is not a happy one. Happy one. A penalty. Fifty-four. We seek a penalty. Fifty-four. We seek a penalty. Fifty-four. The general stand is sorry. They come in force with stealthy strides. 
indeed our obvious cause is now to hide.
tormented with the anguish, dread of falsehood on a town. I lay upon my sleepless bed and tossed and turned and groaned. The man who finds his conscience ache no peace at all enjoys. And as I lay in bed awake, I thought I heard a noise. He thought he heard a noise. Ha! No, all is still in Daylon Hill. My mind is set at ease. How still the scene, it must have been the sighing of the
resolution manly for death prefer unhappy General Stanley.
century has only been brought down to the beginning of the century. But still in getting up, my daughters, eight or nine or ten in all, I've shown myself the model of a modern major general. But still in getting up, the daughters, eight or nine or ten in all, I've shown myself the model of a modern major general. Why this delay? 